Okay, next up, all the way from Argentina, we have net for bio presenting for net for bio is co-founder and CEO Joaquin Fish. Come on out. All right. Go, go ahead and start. Oh, if we can start the uh, slides, please, and reset the clock. No. That would be lovely. All right, so we all know that food waste is such a huge issue. In fact, if it were a country, it would be the third largest greenhouse gas emitter after China and the U.S. Almost 30% of all fruit produce is lost or waste every year. And this is worse for fruits and vegetables, where almost half of all that is produced goes uneaten. Now, imagine a perfectly looking and juicy lemon waiting for you at your grocery store. This lemon had to go through several different stages before arriving at the shelves in perfect conditions, and most produce is not grown everywhere in the world, so they have to be long, shipped over long distances. Now, how do they arrive looking like this instead of this? Well, that's partially thanks to pesticides, which take care of biological spoiling factors, such as the attack of microbial pests, and waxes and coatings, which help in retaining weight, moisture and flavor. But the problem is that currently used pesticides are synthetic compounds, which are harmful to human beings and environment, so they are being banned. And even though there are natural waxes available that might come from plant or insect compounds, scaling up these solutions is a real challenge. My name is Joaquin Fish, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of nat bio where we harness the power of microbial fermentation to protect our food. Our coatings are based on biomolecules produced by non-GMOs, which were isolated from nature. These coatings are transparent, odorless, and tasteless, so they don't alter the customer experience. How does it work? The coating is made of a glucose-based biopolymer produced by fungi and naturally occurring antimicrobials produced by different strains. We combine the biopolymer with food-grade excipients, forming a coating that regulates the gas exchange between the fruit and the environment, delaying the ripening process. The coating also provides a structural matrix, preventing the drift and enhancing the delivery of the antimicrobials, allowing us to use very little doses of these molecules and still get meaningful results. Even though the coating is fully edible, it can be easily washed off with water if desired. Our MVP is a food-grade coating for citrus, and we performed curative tests by first infecting lemons with a concentrated solution of penicillium and then applying the coating. As a result, our formulation showed to be as effective as the most commonly used synthetic fungicide in citrus. And this means that our customers will be able to market their produce as zero chemical residues, capturing a price premium and without compromising decay control. A similar formulation also showed a good performance protecting berries and our coating also extends the shelf life of produce, like acclimatoric fruits like avocados, gaining up to five days of shelf life in ripening chambers, reducing 15% the weight loss and increasing firmness and browning, which are all big concerns in long value chains. Now, considering that our, our product cannot, see, cannot be seen fighting infections in real time, we prepare a time lapse as a demo. So what you can see here is a lemon being infected by a strain of penicillium and start dehydrating. Look how well the coated lemon retains the color and moisture, and after 21 days, there are no signs of infection whatsoever. But there is a thing we can see in real time. So eight days ago, we launched some, avocados, uh, launched some tests on avocados at the lab, and now we're going to cut, cut them uh, in halves in live, so we can check the pulp. So close up camera, please. Let's switch to the close up camera, please. Yeah. As you can see, there's a clear difference in coloration between the green ones, the coated ones, and the uncoated ones. Let the camera a bit higher, please, Emma. Yeah. And now cut in half, please. This is like Schrodinger avocados. They are both green and brown at the same time. <laughs> so, 
the pulp on the coated avocados are far more greener and firm than the uncoated ones. And this is purely the effect of the product. All right, so let's, let's get back to the deck, please. Regarding our traction, we have three R&D agreements with Citrus Packers, potential customers for our MVP. And now, now we are already field testing on lemons in, in Argentina. So this is a, an actual video of our product being applied in the facilities of one of our partners. The product integrates seamlessly with existing machinery, so there is no need to invest in special equipment. The market, uh, market potential for this technology, we estimate that it's a $3.5 billion opportunity, but initially we're targeting the most exported fruit classes in Latin America, which are citrus, avocados, and berries. And apart from traditional chemical companies, some competitors provide shelf life extension, but no natural protection against microbial pathogens. And there are other competitors focused on biological control as well, but they use living microbes in their formulations, which require special storage and logistic conditions. Our self-free formulations are stable and can be easily stored. We are a science-driven team, and our team has extensive expertise in working with microbes, the compounds they produce, and their applications for the agri-food industry, and our next steps are finishing field testing and having the MVP ready to scale up, securing and protecting our IP, and continuing screening our culture collection for promising microbes and biomolecules. At not for bio we want to help fight against food waste and food insecurity without compromising human or planetary health. And we are looking for partners to help us test and scale up our technology, so please go to notforbio.com and drop us a message or pay us a visit on booth uh, L7. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Emlyn, let's start with you. Great presentation, first and foremost. And thanks Thank so much for pulling up the competitive slide. Um, you know, folks like Appeal and Movie have been around for quite some time. Appeal, in particular, a pretty well-funded uh, competitor of yours. They, too, claim to be you know, non-GMO, use mono-declycerides. I'm curious, how do you think about... You'd mentioned the difference being the natural antimicrobial. Is that, how, what is the value proposition? And as you think about the top three things that ultimately suppliers care about when making that buying decision, how do they think about that trade-off? How does it translate to price, availability, et cetera? Well, that's a uh, good question, and it has several different uh, answers. So first, regarding our difference against just, I mean, coatings that extend shelf life of produce, this having the ability to replace effectively replace synthetic pesticides is a huge uh, value added in the midstream. Not so much from a consumer-facing standpoint, because uh, it's, I mean, uh, the product, it's arrived at the shelves after a lot of different stages, but from a, having, a, for, for example, a, a packer that can replace a synthetic pesticide, it can be, uh, it can be a, a, a way to unlock new markets, markets that are very demanding in terms of how many synthetic molecules you put in the food, and also like capturing this price premium from the cereal residue market, which is an in-between between, between conventional and organic produce market. Um, following up with the other part of the, the, the equation, um, as according to our customer discovery process, there is a huge need in replacing these synthetic compounds. But the problem is that there hasn't been a lot of innovation in the post-harvest stage. So pre Pre-harvest, like crop production is packed with amazing companies doing a lot of biological control, but in post-harvest, is, this is not the case. So we are capturing an opportunity, uh, which we know we, uh, we, we think is, uh, is a huge game changer for a lot of companies. Thank you. Milo? Yep. Um, great work. Super exciting. Um, can you talk a little bit about the application process? Yeah, so the good thing about the formulation is the film-forming properties. So this translates into a liquid that, when it's sprayed, it has a very strong uh, capability of forming a film around the fruit. So that is actually that what ultimately provides the optimum protection for produce. So we are testing, of course, this is the first time we, are, we, left, out the lab, we left the lab bench, so it's, it's going to take us some iterations to, feel, to iterate with our, with our partners. partners. Um, but field tests are going great, and the product is showing good progress and good function. So it's just uh, spraying. It can be also applied by a dip or submersion, submersion application, which is not optimal in terms of uh, yield coverage from our standpoint because it requires more product per ton of fruit, but it can be a, uh, an option as well. And are you thinking it's going to be done in the field? 
at the packing facility? Like, yeah, we enter the value chain at the midstream, which is at the packing, packing lines between distributors and after farmers. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Great question. Dave? Yeah, I, I never imagined that we'd be talking about avocado weight loss in, uh, in this <laughs> setting, so quite interesting. <laughs> um, curious to know, so in those lines that you're talking about where the application is done, are they already applying things to fruit and vegetables in that kind of process today? It yeah, it depends. Uh, on citrus, there is a heavily uh, like automated packing lines for, for, for treat citrus. Uh, avocados, it depends on the customer. They, some of them have facilities to apply, uh, to apply a, liquid, a, spraying liquid, a spraying liquid, and some of them don't. And regarding blueberries and strawberries, this is kind of heterogeneous because some of them, for example, very demanding and fast-paced market, uh, actually puts the, the, the produce in the clamshells in the same field, and they pack it like in seven or 10 days, it's arrived uh, to a US customer, for example, for a Chilean producer. So it really depends. We're trying to make a uh, one size fit all formulation, so we can like uh, grab the most sizable part of the market right away, and then start iterating in maybe more speci specific uh, formulations. Thanks. Jameson? Um, can you talk a little bit about sort of early customer conversations? Um, you know, what do customers really care about here? And then have you done any exploration around pricing? Yeah, that's a very good question. And that's something that we are doing right now. Uh, we are pretty much focused right now on having a functional product uh, that can uh, provide a, a good level of protection by, by using the same existing equipment. Um, so far, we haven't discussed price yet. According to our unit economics, we may be able to cut cost less than 0.5% in their cost structure, and in exchange, allowing them to cap to this 10 to 15% price premium. So from a, from a, like a, like a exchange standpoint, it's, it closes for them. It's good for us, we, so we, we, can, we can produce our, our media, media culture goals is negligible, 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 <laughs> sorry. Um, so it costs us very uh, few dollars per ton to produce our, our compounds. Um, but yeah, there's a thing that we have to do. Great. Still do. Great. Last question goes to Charles. I um, <clears throat> uh, really enjoyed the presentation. How hard will it be to expand beyond citrus? And like, how generalizable is the technology? We think about other. You, you alluded to this, but I'm just. Great curious. question. Yeah. First one is like a, we call pathogen fit, in which we have to have a molecule that can control effectively this pathogen. Mm -hmm. The antimicrobial we use is, has a very wide mechanism of action, so it works against pathogens at blueberries and strawberries, anthracnose in avocados, also both penicilliums in, in citrus. So we ha don't have to explore for another molecule. In terms of the formulation, it all comes down to the application equipment. So if the customers use a spraying application, the base formulation would be a slightly more different than if they use an e electrostatic application, which is used in more fragile fruits like blueberries or strawberries. Mm -hmm. And that is the thing we, we are still on the, phase, on, the, on the development phase, but we're getting it. We get into it. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Give them a round of applause. Thanks. I feel like avocados are aspirational foods. I buy a lot of them, and I always aspire <laughs> to eat them, but I never do.